Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer, and today I'm going to talk about the fortification system in Battlefield 5 and whether or not I think it's actually good for the game. Now if you want to help support the channel, I'm selling wooden computer monitor stands, you can check the description for that. Now, when it comes to the Battlefield 5 fortification system, initially, seems like, um, Fortnite, right? And it seems kind of gimmicky. Like, oh, haha, -ha, I can put sandbags here. Or I can, oh, look at that, I can build a freaking dumb wall. But playing the game more and more, I realize how much I really like the fortification system and the kind of dynamic encounters it creates in the game. Now, I think that the system's in its infancy. I think, honestly, Battlefield Five, the fortifications are going to be okay. I think Battlefield 6, if there is fortifications, they're going to be a lot better. But you know, it seems really cool how there's some places to where you can just build a base, right? Or build a sniper nest to take cover. And it generally, I think it adds to the feeling that you're playing a war game, right? There's a lot of stuff you can fortify. It's not just like inside the objective. There's random hills that you can seemingly fortify. Right, and it creates it creates a need to use tanks and the assault class properly. That's I think a big one. See, in previous battlefield games, it seemed like it seemed like at least to me that um you didn't you needed maybe like I would say out of ten people, you needed one assault class. Maybe two if the team was going vehicle heavy and they were good. But it didn't really seem like you needed a lot of them, especially in Battlefield 1. I mean, Battlefield 1, you needed like one assault guy. Now, it seems like you need, like, every squad should have an assault class or two because you have to punch through these objectives. Think of Rotterdam map. Think of D objective. That's the one that's always got the big sandbag wall that you just can't get through, so you're always climbing over, going around, and always getting shot because it's predictable where you're coming from. If you bring an assault class or a tank, way more options. Way more options of attack. And now it's not just... Now, what I like is that houses aren't useless anymore. Like before, in Battlefield 1, I remember this, there were just some places to where houses would get destroyed and you just, you didn't know what to do. Couldn't even, you couldn't use the house anymore. Just plain and simple. Now, you can kind of rebuild cover and leave spots open and closed and really, you know, use, still use those buildings. Instead of, you know, relying heavily on smoke or gas grenades. In Battlefield 1, I know initially everyone used gas grenades because it was a World War One game, but... I, used, I carried fire grenades mainly because it would stop an enemy advance. I would either carry fire or I would carry smoke because I needed smoke cover or I needed to stop an enemy advance. Now you have fortifications, so they add that layer of protection and you're not limited to just using fire or smoke or gas. So I really like the system that the fortification uses, the dynamic of really needing to use your tanks, and especially now that tanks have limited ammo, you have to go resupply them. I think that was a great addition because it makes it so... There, tank, Tanks, there's a strategy to the tanks. Very obvious that you need to think about what you're doing, and I think fortifications add to making tanks more fun other than mindlessly driving around shooting people. Like, I think genuinely fortifications add a level of depth to the tanks. As well as bombers, right? I mean, if I'm flying a bomber, I used to only have to look for where the players were. Now I have to see, oh, yeah, there's players inside of this building, but this other one is fortified and it's stopping my troops from getting through. So it makes bomber play more tactical. Now along with the, like the fortifications, I feel like it adds a layer of like, I know I say layer a lot, but it adds this feeling of, like, hunkering down 
doesn't seem useless. To me, Battlefield seemed always about attack, attack, attack. And there was never anything really you could defend with other than a tank. Like, it seemed like... It seemed like... You would have to use the tank and always be moving around in the tank to make defense worth it. Battlefield 1, there was a bunch of cover, which made it, I guess, easier to defend. Now, you can spend some time and really start to defend properly. And I think that's a cool, cool dynamic. That I think it makes defense more of a viable strategy, right? Because, and like... I, I usually end up always playing a sniper, right? I don't know why, but I end up doing it. And with the fortifications, even though I'm, it's kind of obvious where I'm hiding, I feel like it helps. Um, I feel like I stay alive longer as a sniper because I'm not pushing all the time. I'm not pushing to get certain objectives. And if I need extra cover, I can make it. Or I can have my support buddy come and make it. So... That's what I think of about the fortification system. I really like it. I think it adds strategy to assault and tank class. And I think it makes it so defense is more of a viable option. And it allows you to build a strategy of attack, defend, or a mix of both. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, you can also tell me that. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I'll see you next episode, stream, or vlog of whatever I decide to make.